Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ewelina Malanowska and I would like to present you a study Outcomes and Learning Curve of Laparoscopic Lateral Suspension versus Laparoscopic Sacrocervicopexy for Pelvic Organ Prolapse, a randomized clinical trial. The study was conducted at the Pomeranian Medical University, Department of Gynecology, with the cooperation of the Department of Urology at the University of Verona. I have nothing to disclose. Laparoscopic approach for pelvic organ prolapse offer many advantages, including better anatomical structures identification, shorter hospitalization, decreased postoperative pain, and reduced complication rates. Sacrocolpopexy still remains a gold standard technique in the treatment of apical prolapse. However, we are still looking for other methods. Because of the challenging dissection of the promontory area, the lack of standardized technique, different meshes, anatomic abnormalities of promontory, and long learning curve of the procedure. The aim of our study was to compare laparoscopic lateral suspension and laparoscopic sacrocervicopexy in terms of anatomical and functional effectiveness, as well as complications rates and learning curve. From January 2016 to October 2019, we enrolled patients with uterine pelvic organ prolapse greater than stage 2 and randomly located them for lateral or sacrocervicopexy. This figure shows the study design. Inclusion criteria were uterine prolapse stage greater than 2, exclusion criteria were cervical pathologies, previous urogynecological operations, neurological diseases, associated posterior vaginal wall defects, stress urinary incontinence. Data were prospectively collected in a dedicated database. We evaluated the stage of prolapse according to POPQ scale, quality of life using validated questionnaires, operating time, blood loss, complications rates. This slide describes meshes we used for both techniques. The anatomic success was comparable after 12 months for both procedures and were 90% for laparoscopic promontor fixation versus 89% for lateral suspension. Positive effect for the anterior compartment was found in 88% after promontor fixation versus 91% after lateral suspension. This difference was not significant. We did not observe any increased prevalence of the posterior compartment prolapse in both groups. Intraoperative complications and mean operative time did not differ between groups. Quality of life questionnaires showed highly satisfaction with the outcome in both the procedures. Figure 1 on the left side depicts learning curve for laparoscopic sacrocervicopexy and figure on the right side depicts learning curve for laparoscopic lateral suspension. And we can clearly see that the time of surgery of laparoscopic lateral suspension decreases with the number of conducted procedures comparing to laparoscopic promontor fixation. Lateral suspension as well as sacrocervicopexy, has proven to be effective and safe in cervical suspension. Comparing to sacrocervicopexy, lateral cervicopexy required shorter learning curve. Lateral suspension does not need promontory preparation, which is at high risk of vascular damage and mesh pathway is far from ureter. Furthermore, this technique has fewer risks than sacrocervicopexy. Thus, Lateral suspension may be easier to learn than sacrocervicopexy for a novel surgeon. Concluding message 
the laparoscopic lateral suspension is a good alternative to the laparoscopic sacrocervicopexy in the treatment of apical defect. Lateral cervicopexy has a shorter learning curve, which makes it a good surgical choice for a novel surgeon. If you have found this study interesting, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for your attention.